Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a double Civivi giveaway, my knife journal from Apex Alchemy, and when the shiznit goes down, you better be ready, folder edition. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. I had a couple of comments uh, from this week I want to show. This one is uh, funny because uh, it got me. It was a total trolling, but it got me. Uh, this is from uh, the video for the Taipan the absolutely incredible uh, and robust dagger that's been a uh, cold steel standby for many, many years. Uh, Jonas Grumpy 4749 said, this knife is a joke. And I saw that and I was like, what? I got, I'm such a spaz, guys. I saw that and I got all hot and I was like, oh, um, you know, what is he talking about? He doesn't know. Like, you know and I was like, wait a second, this guy's trolling me. Look at his name, Jonas Grumpy uh grumby 4749 and uh of course this knife is not a joke it is uh it is a very very serious knife and uh thank you sir thanks for the the trolling i appreciate it and it's always good to keep me on my toes i'm a curmudgeon and i am hot-headed you might not know that about me and uh sometimes uh the things especially in text you don't you don't quite understand the content or the uh, intent until you stew over it for a second. So uh, my second favorite comment was on my large pyrite video. And uh, 4449 John said, I'm going to have to quit watching your channel. Just ordered this even in the same green micarta. Thought I was done buying for the month, but evidently not. Love the blade shape, love micarta, and green is my favorite color for cars, tools, and carry. This will be my first CJRB, so I'm hoping it's everything you said it was. Okay, I did get a second opinion, and it agreed with you, so things should be happy. Looks marvelous. This will be my second button lock. The other is from Olight. Not sure if I will love button locks yet, but they can uh, sure be fun to play with. Only time will tell. Well, I love this comment because I have just been crushing on this knife, on the CJRB large pyrite this thing has been in my pocket a lot since i got it i've only had it for about uh, three weeks at this point i think uh but late summer uh, acquisition has been in my uh, swimsuit has been in my um shorts and in my uh, work work pocket you know for my office job it has been with me a lot i absolutely love this knife and the action has uh, gotten just better and better and better. It started a little sticky, but that was after the first uh, after the first 200 flips uh, and a little bit of annoyance by everyone around me. This thing was butter smooth, no stick, no nothing, and it is solid as the day is long. When they first sent me this knife uh, in the small original version, <clears throat> I was showing it off a lot. Uh, this one I bought myself. I gave that original one away to a friend there okay you see that little slot in there that is where the plunge lock from the button goes and it locks into that it's not a little cone shape same thing on the back side it's not a little cone shape that the uh plunge wedges into it is a defined uh, uh quarter cylinder notch and then a quarter of the cylinder that is that plunge lock on the button locks into there it's like such a nice fit it's perfect no stick and super super strong if you like button locks and you're concerned because you've seen people do spine wax uh yeah you could do it with this lock uh but you'd have to hit it pretty damn hard i would imagine mine hasn't failed so anyway john uh, i hope you enjoy the knife it is great i have been loving it i cannot wait until they come out with the Warncliffe, the large Warncliffe, because that's the order of things. That's how they did it with the small one. You get people hooked on the drop point, and then after a while, you're like, hey, we got this Warncliffe now, too. And I will get that in the stainless steel, for sure. John, uh, Jonas Grumby, and everybody else, thank you so much for commenting and watching. I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, well, we'll see you here next week. All right, all that being said, 
I think it's time for a pocket check. Let's do it. All right, I will not wax poetic any longer on this. In my front right pocket today, I had the large pyrite. Yes, that's an awesome, awesome knife from CJRB. And Artisan, just on a broader note, I'm starting to really, really like Artisan. Everything I have from them, whether it's in the CJRB line or in the Artisan line, is just, mm, just awesome. As a matter of fact, uh, right now, I know this is a pocket check, but I have all these knives out. I have to have something in my pocket while I do a pocket check, I happen to have this artisan cutlery um, Hyperion in my pocket that Dave uh, from this old sword blade reviews gave me artisan mm, chef's kiss big time. Awesome. All right. Next up in my pocket. Yeah, you know, it is a Jack Wolf knives laid back Jack, but I went back to the original today. Um, I've been carrying the wood one, the new version quite a bit. And I decided to go back to this just to compare and contrast. And um, this one feels a little bit more rugged to me. Not rugged. I don't mean they're both very, very stout. But this one to me, I've had longer and um, it has the, the more um, textured handle in that micarta. And uh, I just feel more likely to bang around with this one than I do with that fine, fine rosewood handle. Just a great, great blade. I love a swayback jack, whether it's uh, this laid back jack or the uh, number 47 Viper from GEC or the case swayback jack. I love my case swayback jack. Um, I just love the the whole um, package. I love that pattern. So I had this in my pocket, double my card. Uh-oh. I think I had all my card. No, I had some G10 in there spoiling the party just kidding i love g10 too all right in my front right pocket right next to the cjrb was my fixed blade uh we're kind of going through our dog days of summer i did not feel like a fixed blade today on the belt or in the waistband so i had the beautiful dirk pinkerton custom broadhead in my pocket there you can see his logo dp and uh, then there you have that really nicely um, uh, acute tip and those four perfect bevels uh, coming to a, just a nasty, nasty tip. I love this knife because it's very versatile. Uh, that's part of the, the USP of this knife. You put it on your on your forefinger and you have a like perfectly angled uh, dagger coming out of your grip. Um, <clears throat> that's my favorite grip of it. Uh, with this, you can put it on the forefinger and have it like a push dagger. So nasty. And with that acute tip, it's going into anything. Uh, Dirk himself likes it in the reverse grip like this. Uh, my pinkies are too thin for that, I think. Uh, I mean, I can grab this handle pretty well uh, with my right hand, but I, I feel like I would want my pinky to fill that hole in uh, a little bit more. I got kind of slender fingers there. Uh, the grip is this beautiful GL Hansen and Son. Um, uh, G Carta, and it's in CPM Magna Cut. Oh, such a cool knife. Uh, I have, I haven't done this yet, but I keep thinking, uh, so I drop this in the pocket and I can just reach in and put my, my finger in there and then pull it out. And then I can slip it off with that. But I'm thinking, how cool would it be to just put a little patch of Velcro there and in certain pants, put a little Velcro on the inside, and, or I could just baby pin it in there i'm not sure how i would do it but i i want to attach that sheath to the inside of my pocket so i just reach in and draw that sweet wicked little thing look that's a nice lineup right there if i do say so myself okay last up for emotional support my esk my emotional support knife today was the pony stout from devo knives that's lefty uh that's a uh, Kevin Johnson of Lefty EDC and Colin Maison Pierre of CM Designs come together to form Devo Knives and they make some really, really beautiful folders. I have two of them. And uh, this one, I don't know, I vacillate which one is my favorite. Uh, which one is my favorite? Today, it's this one. <laughs> this is the one I had on me. Nice, deep, hollow ground, sheep's foot blade with a swedge. Just a beautiful blade, I think. Uh, nice and utilitarian crown spine. You have a spot there for your thumb and uh, a 50-50 uh, choil uh, so you can choke up and really do the work. But 
Uh, the thing I love most about this is the fidget action. I mean, actually, I don't know if that's true. I love the way it looks too. I love the ergonomics of this, but this one is just so fun to flip open and and to to flick. Now, this is my left hand, and I can even do it with my left hand, which is uh, you're like Bob. You call yourself knife knife junkie. You're 52 years old. You can't flick it with your left hand yet. Well, yes, I can. But uh, put a front flipper on there and I might be in trouble. All right. So this has been my pocket check. I got the CJRB Large Pyrite, a, uh, an awesome knife indeed. I have uh, another awesome knife, the Jack Wolf Knives Laid Back Jack. That's the first version. Uh, the beautiful and deadly Dirk Pinkerton Broadhead right here. And then, of course, the charming and useful Devo Knives Pony Stout. What were you guys carrying? Let me know. Drop it in the comments. Uh, like I say, every week, I love the inspiration. I like finding out uh, what everyone else is carrying. We got a classy bunch of people here watching, uh, so I like to hear about your classy knives. All right, for Gentleman Junkies, in the month of September, which we are in now, can you believe it, September already? We will be given away on September 21st. That's the third Thursday of every month. We give away a knife for the Gentleman Junkies. Uh, those are the top tier members. Oh, we'll call them tier one. Those are the tier one operators. No, I'm just kidding. Tier one uh, guys uh, over there in Patreon. That's the 10 level uh, support. And we really appreciate it. And we give away a knife. Uh, and it's not commensurate with your support, but it's just a token of our appreciation. And uh, it is greatly appreciated. Now, uh, this month's giveaway is really cool. These knives uh, frequently, uh, well, these knives today uh, come from Dave, this old sword blade reviews. He gives this channel so many awesome knives and we like to share the wealth. And this is a cool package. This is a double knife giveaway uh, and it's Civivi. Two small, really cool knives that. Um, if they weren't, if I didn't have a moratorium on small knives uh, going into the collection, I would have adopted these in the DeMarco knife adoption program. First one is the, uh, what is this one called? The Key V, the K I V I. Okay, plus. So this is the large version of this knife. It is a, a front flipper, and uh, that's my left hand there. So I'm not going to actually flip it. <laughs> Uh, but look at this. It's a kiridashi. It's a little modernized folding kiridashi. And you have that upward angle uh, of the blade up towards the tip. The tip is above center line, which makes it ultra useful. And uh, it is small. That's like a two and a half inch blade. Use it like this all day long for utility cuts, opening boxes, uh, doing school projects, carving out cardboard, whatever it is. Uh, but then you're menaced at the Pizza Hut on your way out. And what do you do? Uh, you reverse it in your grip and you have a perfect angle for a Pakal style knife there. Look at that. Look at look at the way the tip reaches forward. Imagine a, uh, a back fist with this. So, yes, it's the charming little EDC Key V plus or Key v, Kai V. We'll call it the Key V. Charming and uh, lovely and uh, white handled and ivory and nice. And yet you can bend it towards mayhem if need be. So uh, that's one knife. And then the other, a complimentary uh, situation here, is the beautiful Lumi. This one looks to me like another little Japanese utility knife, but more along the Quaken line. Uh, this is designed by Justin Lundquist, I think. Yep. Uh, Justin Lundquist, a, uh, a prolific designer, makes some pretty cool stuff and... Uh, licenses a lot of his designs to companies like Kaiser and Civivi and we uh, really really beautiful knife uh, you have a crowned well it's not a crown spine but the um, chamfers seem rounded so it's nice and smooth that is the signature Civivi hollow grind coming to a crazy acute point two great little uh, this one is a nice front flipper too I like the way this one works uh, a little bit better than the Kiwi, I got to be honest. But, you know, you're not talking to a, a front-flipping fanatic here. Uh, just a great, great little utility knife. Two, five, uh, two fifth pocket knives here from Civivi going out to a lucky Gentleman Junkie winner on September 1st. So be here uh, to watch the Wheel of Destiny spin, and who knows, maybe you might be on that wheel to win. 
All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at some uh, four new models or more <laughs> coming out in Knife Life News. And then beyond that, we're going to take a look at something cool coming to us from Apex Alchemy right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Did you see uh, the uh, the Viper, the LT right knives Viper in that lineup? Oh, my own. That looks beautiful. Uh, that liner gets me every week because every week it changes. And every week there's something tasty. Okay, speaking of something tasty, uh, the new Kaiser roll. I mean, the new Kaiser uh, is pretty damn sweet. It's a Paul Munko design. And it's called the Mystic. I said the new Kaiser. They have a bunch. And and by the way, I'm sorry, Jim. I misspelled Kaiser. I was looking at it, and that's how you spell Kaiser, like Kaiser Roll or a Kaiser Wilhelm. Sorry about that. Uh, this is Kaiser Knives. That's K I S E K I Z E R. My bad. Anyway, uh, speaking of bad, Paul Munko, uh, he's an artist. He makes really, really beautiful uh, work and really cool knives. This is his third one with Kaiser Knives called the Mystic after Mystic Connecticut because this 3.75 inch Rex 45. Yeah, that's right. Rex 45 uh, double peaked clip point is inspired by whaling and the whaling industry and New England. Thank you, sir. I <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, Jim just fixed the spelling uh, for us. That is more accurate. Uh, but when you look at this beautiful knife, it not only uh, touches off certain things uh, for me, 3.75 inches, that beautiful blade shape. This is one I am getting. This isn't just uh, this isn't just um, lip service. I will be getting this knife in my life. Uh, but you have titanium bolsters. You have the micarta. Uh, it's a liner lock. Just a Is it a liner lock? Or, okay, the 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 jury is out. Uh, I didn't write it down, and now I can't remember. It might be a bolster lock. Can you, uh... oh, it is a liner lock. Okay, thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's a liner lock. And um, so titanium micarta, 4.3 ounces, 4.43. To me, that's pretty light for a 3.75 inch knife. So very psyched about that. I love this whole connection to whaling. And Mystic, Connecticut, I, uh, you know, I've been up to New England a, a bit, you know, more in when I was a younger man. And I love it up there. It's so beautiful. And my sister used to live in a whale, an old whaling town in Massachusetts. And there's and then I, I quote unquote, read Moby Dick. That was a book on tape. Uh, and it's amazing. It's a fascinating part of our past that we don't even realize how much whale oil you know, our, our whole society ran on whale oil for a chunk of time. And these people went out for years at a time hunting whales. And sometimes they came back empty handed and they were paid by commission. I mean, I don't know, a lot of very interesting stuff in the past, but I'm talking about this knife. Rex 45 is an old, um, not old, but a, a sort of a stalwart, um, uh, what do you call it? Tool steel. And so this will patina. It's a very tough, uh, very edge retention oriented tool steel, but it also patinas. So uh, Paul Munko, who, as I mentioned, is an artist, was interested in this steel because it will also uh, kind of keep up with the maritime theme of this knife. Uh, you know, it's supposed to look, it's a harpoon uh, clip point. It has, it's called the Mystic. And then as that uh, blade steel patinas, it will be more and more like something you might find in a, in a, in a, harpooners cabinet i don't know i think it's cool i think it's really cool and i i like it when knives have stories like this so anyway you might be seeing that here soon next up a knife i wish you'd be seeing here soon it's just a little too rich for my blood for what it is is the benchmade cla i love that automatic knife it's an out the side automatic that i fell in love with uh once just from watching someone's video 
and uh, it's it's got the composite handle. It's a very light automatic knife, composite light automatic. I think that's what the CLA stands for. We went through this on Thursday night knives, but you know it was that was late. Uh, anyway, you got this beautiful uh, battle worn finish, um, and a uh, this the same basic shape. They've tweaked the handle a little bit, and on this new Magna Cut version. Uh, you get that battle wash. That's what it's called. It's a 3.4 inch Magna Cut blade. But they also tweaked uh, the handle and are giving you ivory and OD green. And I, I think it's beautiful. I really like this knife a lot. It is available now. Um, if, if you like the CLA, if you like Benchmade Automatics, you might want to jump on this because it's not going to be around forever. I love the bronze button on that ivory one. I probably would not get the ivory because it sticks in my craw when ivory gets dirty because it makes you look like a dirty person with dirty hands. Uh, and I know some of you are like, yeah, well, that's because I work. Well, we all work, but you still got to wash your hands. Uh, so I'd probably get the green. All right, next. So Vivi is coming out with Ultim models. Yes, Ultim, that super trendy um, uh, plastic uh, that came out not too long ago. First featured on the bear model from um tactile knives uh it is a a nice i i like it because i like that um not ivory what the hell is it called uh that amber color i really like the amber color i'm not sold on the transparency i gotta say for instance this elementum is nothing to look at transparent i gotta say uh, however the other model that they're coming out with the praxis a classic uh these are still retaining their their original steels d2 in the elementum and in the praxis here 9cr but to me the praxis looks better uh underneath the hood you can see through the ultim you can see the weight relief cuts in the steel liners and they're more uh interesting to me they're more honeycombed thanks for going wide on that uh yeah you can it's a more interesting pattern and it looks more deliberate. Whereas uh, the elementum looks deliberate, but it doesn't look like it's supposed to be seen. Anyway, that's my interpretation. I really like the black blade next to the ultim in the praxis. Uh, and uh, so there they go. I'm sure Savivi will, will uh, gauge the success of this, of these two releases and then, and then go hog wild. I'm sure. Uh, so that'll be cool to watch. And last up, it's from Rosecraft again. Again and again, it seems we have uh, Rosecraft. Man, they, uh, as Ben Schwartz from Knife News says, we can now officially call them a prolific company. And yes, they are indeed. Here's another one coming out from um, their uh, owner operator. And it is uh, a really nice, actually, nice looking, long, sleek clip point blade. And they're calling this one the um, Yoka, the Yoka. And it's spelled a little bit differently, but uh, the Yoka, indeed. And it is a 3.3-ounce uh, uh, flipper, ceramic bearings, G10 with a faux bolster. And you can, of course, get it in their signature black and red coloration. Uh, I, I personally like this better. I'm not a huge fan of the black and red. It reminds me of hair metal. Uh, from the 80s. And, you know, I appreciate hair metal like everybody else, but, uh, um, you know, don't need it in my life all the time, especially in my pocket. Uh, but that's just me. That's a, a personal taste thing. Yoka spelled J-O-K-A. Looks like Joka. What are you, some kind of a Joka? But it's Yoka. And uh, that's a serpent or dragon in Swahili. Um, so there you go. 3.6 inches. That blade almost fits completely in that very doctor's knife type handle. Uh, no doubt a uh, going to be another nice flipper. It's using AR RPM 9 steel, which makes me think that uh, it's made by Artisan, I guess one would assume, unless Artisan is uh, selling their steel to other manufacturers. But who knows? I don't know. These guys are all making each other's not. Who can tell? I don't know. But I do know, I think it's a pretty nice looking knife. I also know... Uh, speaking with Jim before we started rolling here today, I need to get some Rosecrafts in here to check out, both in the slip joint and flipper variety. All right, that is Knife Life news for this week. Um, 
Coming up next, we're going to take it so, uh, take a look at something very cool uh, sent in by Apex Alchemy. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Billy uh, from the Apex Alchemy channel. You got to check that channel out, by the way. And his wife, Mrs. Apex, uh, sent me this really cool thing they just came up with uh, called the Knife Journal. We showed this off on Thursday Night Knives, but uh, I want to show it off here. And uh, it's, a, it's a really cool way to uh, document your knife collection and what you've done to sharpen them, to test them, and what your results have been. So, um, and there you you can enter forty knives in this particular uh, book, which by the way is on Amazon. Here, I think the logo is covering it up, but it's, you can see there it says knife. So brand and model. Let's say uh, Cold Steel Voyager, and then you go down the row here. Overall length nine inches, blade length four inches, blade style clip point, steel os ten, blah blah blah. And you go down here, country of origin, you fill all this out, your, your specs. And then over here, you can keep a record of your sharpening. Um, so as you, um, who knows, maybe this is a knife you use a lot for work. So you end up sharpening it a lot and you want to keep track of the different stones and different uh, techniques or stones and um, like stropping uh, that you use. You can keep track of it here. I really liked the edge last time. I could go back. And um, so it's a really nice way to document things. And then you turn the page and you have testing. You see there, testing. And then notes and modifications. So a uh, method of testing, I did jute rope. I did uh, rolled up uh, denim like Stasa. Uh, you know, I did all sorts of tubes and cardboards and stuff. You write all that down here and your results. Thing was awesome. My sharpening rocks. And the over here, uh, I... For notes and modifications, to me, this would be an area where I would keep track of the history of the knife. Uh, got this from my brother and blah, blah, blah. And this or got it in a trade and I paid this much for it. You know, I, I would have in the notes, I would keep the history of the knife. That's um, so that's what I will do. I haven't started using this yet, but I really, really like this. Um, it's I believe it's 13 bucks on Amazon and you're supporting uh, helping support uh, Mr. and Mrs. Apex Alchemy, who, by the way, have an awesome channel. And um, I, I really like it. I think uh, I think this is the sort of, you know, innovative, innovative thing that people who are uh, in the knife world or knife adjacent or whatever uh, can can come up with, make a little money and also be relevant. You know, this is the kind of thing people have a lot of knives. They have collections. They want to keep track. So it makes sense. Uh, so thank you both uh, Mr. and Mrs. Apex Alchemy for uh, sending me that. I look forward to uh, filling it out and uh, you guys go check it out. It's pretty cool over on Amazon. All right. Now we're going to get to our main topic, which uh, is when the shiznit goes down, you better be ready. Uh, I was actually listening to the old Cypress Hill album the other day. And, uh, you know, I have a soft spot for that album. Um, I can't, uh, What's it called? I can't remember what it's called all of a sudden. Uh, but I was listening uh, to that and other songs, and they're hilarious. Uh, my brother and I used to be so into them in the 90s. Um, but anyway, uh, it made me think of things we've covered here before, but uh, knives you would want on you when it goes down. Oh, my God. Thank God I have this. I might stand a chance. Of course, we're talking uh, We're talking in a situation without a firearm or or. or or a spear or a battle axe. <laughs> all you got on you is a folder. This is all about folders. Um, because I have plenty of uh, fixed blades that I would love to have on me. Um, probably almost any fixed blade. Uh, 
but these are the folders. Okay, the first one is not readily available, but versions of this are. And uh, it can be had and will be more widely available in the very near future. And this is the inversion folding pickal by uh, Pinkerton, Dirk Pinkerton Knives. Uh, you can also, uh, uh, Kaiser made the inversion with a reverse Tonto that went like this. And those you can still find. Uh, they're out of print, but you can still find those. Uh, so really, it's the folding Pakal. You could look at the Tier 1 Scythe. You could look at the uh, Emerson Elvia um, or the Kaiser inversion. For me, it's this inversion by Dirk Pinkerton. I got in on a, uh, a pre-order that he did with one of these that also has a ring that you can remove and, and put on. But this is small and very useful uh, for what you're going to be using it for 99.9% percent of the time which is opening up boxes uh maybe cutting off open up a, a food package or uh letters no one gets letters anymore but you know what i mean uh, let's say amazon boxes whatever it is uh and you can open it up with this wave like feature on the top but if you really need it in uh in dire circumstances you've got it and it's built for that that sort of melee situation so the first one is a folding pakal in this case the pickerton inversion prototype but there are production models out there that you can get um you're gonna see a number of blade shapes similar to this in this list uh, either um either worn cliffs or straight edged uh blades this one is more on the hawkbill side and uh it just seems that they cut deeper and uh more continuously all the way to the tip. So in that spirit, there has to be an Emerson on this list. I'm only choosing one knife per brand on this list. So um, only one Emerson. Uh, I would take any Emerson into a situation that I thought was going to be nasty. Uh, but this is my favorite. Uh, this is my go-to. Uh, even though it's not my historical favorite. On paper, it's not my favorite, but in use it is. And that is the sax, the Emerson sax. This thing I absolutely adore. Um, I had a hard time with the handle when I first got it. I thought it was too much like the uh, Contego, Contigo from Benchmade with the with the middle finger or with this with the center partition there. But it has become one of the most comfortable knives for me. I don't, I'm not sure how that happened. I think it was more of a psychological barrier I had to get over. Um, that with the two finger partition there, but in saber grip like this, man, it is so locked in. It feels so good with the, with the thumb pressing against that thumb ramp and the, uh, reverse energy in, in the fingers going towards the pommel. Uh, naturally I carry this more in the right hand with the clip that came on it. It is mounted audaciously low with a standard Emerson clip. It feels incredibly comfortable the way it came, but it just rides way too high. You're just asking for some punk to come up and grab it out of your pocket. Uh, so I got the loop over um, MXG gear pocket clip. I got the short one. And actually with the, with the short version, it fits the palm perfectly. So you almost get the same comfort and effect of the original clip on there if you get the short MXG gear clip on there. Very, 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 very sharp chisel edge on this. People tend to shy away from chisel edges. Maybe they track oddly through materials uh, when you're cutting them because it's a one-sided edge. But that one-sided chisel edge, you know, imagine your, your V-ground edge and then cut it in half. It makes it just incredibly sharp. And then uh, Ernest Emerson also likes it on his knives because he he believes it makes it field expedient in terms of sharpening. You only have one edge to worry about. And I, I get it. If you're out there and you're uh, on the run from the bad guys and your knife has gone dull and you have like, uh, you know, a minute to sharpen it on concrete or whatever, you're going to be A, glad you have 154 CM and B, you're going to be glad you only have one edge to sharpen. So it is the Emerson, um, Emerson Sachs from Emerson Knives, obviously. Love this knife. Okay, next up, one of the best 
Battle Blades, one of the most uh, iconic and ubiquitous Battle Blades and shapes out there is the Kukri. So on this list had to be the uh, uh, Knight's Element MK Ultra. Uh, this is from the very, this is from the second run. So this was when um, he was teamed up with uh, uh, Tactical Elements and fox knives and i believe his association with doug Mar markaida on this project had ended i, I think doug markaida kind of got him in the door at fox knives i think that's how that worked uh, but this is made by fox it is and such an amazing knife i mean over the past few years you've seen this come out countless times uh great flipper uh made by fox titanium frame lock uh, you've got the you've got all the standards uh goodie bits there you got the uh, lock bar insert. You've got the awesome small low profile pocket clip, incredible ergonomics. This is a uh, Jason Knight design all day long. It looks just like one of his big forged uh, kukris, just in folding form. Perfect blade shape um, for the for the purpose. This is my very favorite folding kukri. I think it beats out the Cold Steel Raja. Uh, though the Raja is a super performer, I just think this thing looks cooler <laughs> and feels so good in hand. Um, N690 CO blade steel. That's a flat ground blade. It's super sharp. I know it doesn't look like it goes too high up, but it's very thin behind the edge. And then you have that uh, really nice fuller. Uh, and if the, if the shiznit were going down, uh, you would have thrusting and slashing and hacking capability all day long in this 4.125 inch blade. This is a long blade. This is a big knife that carries small because it's so nice and thin and svelte and light. Uh, that's the Knight Elements MK Ultra. All right, next up, the only folding dagger in my collection and one of the only few out there. So I love the concept of the folding dagger, double-edged, double-edged people. It's not, it's just a dagger like object if it's not double-edged. Uh, so only a couple of companies have the cojones to make such a thing. And uh hinderer was one uh, sharp by design was another and uh, arcane design was another. And this is the one I have the arcane design oh look at that beauty uh antimatter now this knife uh was uh, helped along by something obscene company felix by something obscene company uh in getting in the door at riot uh for um for this and and helping with some of the design work i think here i'm not going to do this with my left hand that is a very sharp double-edged s35 vn blade wait you know what? I'm not sure what the steel is on. I think that's S35. Um, Double-edged, and you've got that beautiful machine satin. Riot makes, <clears throat> excuse me, Riot uh, does an incredible machine satin. You can see those perfect lines uh, going up and down the blade. Beautiful center line with a fuller, and then that titanium bronzed handle really, really locks into hand. Uh, and it being double-edged and kind of a broad-shaped blade, that handle needed to be wide. And wide it is, but man, it feels so good. It's it's uh, never going to twist. And you have these two finger uh, choils here for the thumb and forefinger. Uh, and, and these two angles here on the pommel make it fit right in the palm of the hand beautifully. If you were to use this in a thrust, uh, uh, what do you call it, a saber grip like this. And it doesn't matter which way you're holding it. It's going to work either way, obviously. Just be careful when you go to close it. But yeah, you have to have a folding dagger on this list. And uh, you might you might add that in this grip, first of all, that, that peak there is perfect for the thumb, uh, for capping the pommel with the thumb and having a secure grip so you don't slide down on that. But I mean, this, look at this thing. I mean, just a perfect uh, knife for this kind of, activity trapping um thrusting everything else all right so that's the folding dagger from uh arcane design uh called the antimatter and i gotta say uh it wins on design points look at the the uh, tesla coil here uh that 
totally futuristic look there on the pocket clip and the overall futuristic look on this ancient, you know, dagger design is just so cool. All right. So that's the antimatter. All right. Next up, this is a modern day Viking knife to me. And uh, I'll just get right to it. This is the Bastinelli Creations Big Drago Tack. Um, I love the name Big Drago Tack. Uh, look at that blade. So it is a bellied Warncliffe. You've got a super acute edge uh, with that big triangular front. You're going to make a giant hole with this knife when you thrust it in, whatever you're thrusting it into. And since this is a conversation on when the shiznit goes down, this is obviously uh, someone who has invaded your personal space. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is gonna this is gonna fend them off nicely. Uh, this is a this is a 4.475 inch knife that, man, it wears large. It is a big knife, but somehow I think it's because it's only 0.6 inches wide. It carries beautifully. Made by Lion Steel in Italy. This is a titanium frame lock. You've got this roto block thing uh, where you can lock it open. I'm not going to even. Uh, do that because if you do, it starts to think, oh, I'm useful. Uh, let me let me just hop on without you even wanting it. And I don't like it, but I'm not going to remove it. It's also an over travel device. And I think people sometimes, if they don't like those, um, thread lock them down so that they don't spin and uh, and all like that. But so why is this on this list? Besides the size, which is obvious, uh, that blade is just so wicked. And you've got a nice sweep on it. I like the point down at the bottom. Uh, I like the Warncliffe nature of it, the sax nature of it. But you have a sweep to that blade. And then you have an arc to the handle. So you can present that edge in a number of different manners. Uh, whether you're up here in a Filipino grip with your thumb uh, on the back of the blade, spine of the blade, or you're here uh, where that little thumb swale is, is uh, supplied for you on the back. Uh, in this saber grip, or you can come back here for a more hacking grip. If you're going to swing and slash, give yourself uh, self some extra room. Uh, so this thing, I wouldn't go any further back. Sometimes on the cold steel knives, they have something a little extra on the back. You can even come back to, I wouldn't on this, but you've got three easy hand positions here. Uh, and you have, you're extending your range here. Maximum thrusting control here and then maximum slashing control here. So just a wicked, wicked knife in D2, I think. Yeah, this is one of the early production runs. Um, they, in the last year or so, came out with another run of these after uh, being fallow, this design, for quite a while. And they re-released it with a contoured G10 side and M390 blade steel. So just an awesome knife, the Dragotac, the big Dragotac. I had the regular 3.6 inch Dragotac and now I kick myself in the behind for giving that thing away. All right, next up is going to be controversial, but uh, I'll tell you why this would be a great one for me uh, when it goes down. And that is, yes, the Kershaw Lucha. You're saying, what? What? But the reason I'm picking the Lucha is, A, it's my best Bally Song knife, and B, I've been opening these knives way longer than I've been flipping anything with a thumb stud or a flipper. You know, I've had these things since I was a kid, uh, folding, you know, uh, butterfly knives. This one right here, this one I got in Brooklyn in the early 2000s probably like 2002 or something. And this lived on our coffee table for years and years and years. It was the do everything knife um, and just a cheap martial arts store pickup. And then, I don't know, maybe six years ago or so, I got a Baron Sun and uh, I forgot I even had this knife. I just dug it up for this show and I'm, I'm glad to have it. Uh, it has no lock integrity here. Uh, it's not it's not perfect, and I know Baron Sun makes a lot more high-end uh, butterfly knives than this one, but the Lucha is by far my best uh, butterfly knife, and I feel like since it is such a natural motion to me, I don't have the skills that the Bally Boys at Blade Show have doing all those crazy aerobatics and all that stuff. I don't need it. I have four ways that I can open it really fast, and uh, one, you know, two of 
two of them, one for reverse grip and one for forward grip, are just no flash at all. It's immediate and quick. Um, and I could have this knife out ready to go. Um, and then I have a couple that get progressively flashier, but nothing uh, more than uh, nothing more than three motions to get the blade out. And by the way, those motions could also be used percussively uh, using that handle. I mean, these are Filipino knives that were used by sailors. So the one-handed nature, you're up in the rigging, you got to cut something, you can open it and close it with one hand. Yes, but they're also used a lot for fighting and not just the blade. So uh, these things are pretty awesome. They're not just uh, toys for fun. They're not just dangerous toys. Uh, they're dangerous weapons. And I feel like if I care for a while, when I first got this, I carried it quite a bit, uh, but I could bring this to bear. And uh, the one, the one misgiving I have about it is uh, getting that lock closed. But if you give yourself a second, you can do it either with your other hand, or if you're in reverse grip, you can do it with your thumb. Um, but yeah, Kershaw Lucha. Oh, plus. 4.25 inches. That's the other thing. Uh, the traditional length of a Bally Song blade is uh, 4.25 inches. So bigger than what we're used to carrying uh, for EDC. Bigger than the sweet spot these days. Next up, because I don't want any knives in this list with a secondary um, modification, uh, I chose the Yojimbo. My Yojimbo has a 5x5 a um, pickpocket wave feature on it. Uh, but I would vacillate between that and this. And this is the Yojumbo. And the reason I say that is because the Yojimbo is so compact and so wicked uh, that you might want that even more than this because this takes up much more uh, real estate in the pocket. But what I'm getting at is the thinly ground, thinly hollow ground Warncliffe blade. Um, very... Um, well, it's called the Yojimbo, and that means bodyguard. And uh, well, this is the Yojumbo, so it's a big version of the Yojimbo. And uh, it is designed by Michael Janich, the progenitor of martial blade concepts. And he designed the, uh, which is a, a, uh, a knife fighting system that he created after years of, of A, just being a general badass. I mean, being a spy and in intelligence and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I believe for for Army Intelligence and then other organizations, and then training in Filipino Kali for years and years and years, and then and other martial arts, and then developing his own sort of um, crystal. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. Crystallized version of all of those techniques to make a martial blade system that is direct and to the point, and is all about stopping the opponent. Uh, he's a big proponent of C cuts to the legs with these things. I love that. Uh, comma cut. It's like this. You go in and you scoop. So you thrust and you scoop. And uh, with that blade shape, it is very effective. Do it in some cardboard. Get a piece of cardboard, thrust at it, and do that scooping C cut motion like you're carving a comma into that cardboard, and you'll see. And uh, I know he does a lot of techniques, but the one that sticks out to me from Michael Janich was doing that to someone's thigh. <sighs> Ooh, they're not going to come at you. Uh, is the idea after that. But uh, with this knife, you have the amazing um, compression lock, this awesome action. I did a little bit of modification on this, but it wasn't additional. It was subtractional. And I took away the, there was a, a peak right here in the center to partition your middle, your, your two fingers, kind of like we were talking about with the sacks, but it was a little more egregious on this and just annoying. Uh, and since there was no liner extending up into that peak, I just sanded it down and it's like it was never there. I did leave the secondary peak uh, to sort of uh, bracket my hand in the handle there. Uh, but I've seen people do like BJ Hill do alterations where they make it totally straight. And that looks really cool, too. This one is begging for a little finger choil. I got to say, I'm not crazy about how this terminates here. It's sort of an awkward bit of design. Uh, but um any case, such a great knife and so uh, fidgety, but so incredibly uh, nasty defensively. Um, okay, so something very much in that spirit, but something you could use uh, a lot harder. So if you live a high-speed, low-drag lifestyle, it might be this one 
that you want. This is the Hinderer XM24. That's right, 24 with the four inch blade and with the most beautiful and wicked Warncliffe I've ever seen. I love the Hinderer Warncliffe. I think, especially in the 24, I just think that is so beautiful. Beautiful, but also quite effective. Uh, and look, they have the a very similar angle up at the front of the blade. So you're getting incredible piercing with this. And then with that straight edge, incredible slashing, especially as the blade reaches the tip. Uh, tip below the center line makes it a, a great utility knife because that's what you're going to use this for 99.12, point a billion percent of the time. Um, but in that one moment where you actually uh, need this for something else, this handle is so um, confidence inspiring. It's thick. It's I don't want to say heavy, but it's there. You feel this is one of those knives. Uh, some people, newbies, if you will, uh, to anything, but definitely to knives, uh, equate uh, density and weight with quality. And I do not. Most of us do not uh, at this point in our knife collecting and using and buying. But sometimes you like a little weight uh, to inspire confidence. And that's what you get here some density and weight that slab of titanium on the lock side is not weight relieved there are no pockets in there for your dainty little hands to to make it easier for you to carry you know buck up it's a knife buddy it's gonna have some weight to it but it's not excessive um and it just feels amazing in hand now i know this is a high-end knife and that, that i'm talking about here and uh you know, there are other hinderer knives that you can have for way less than this. This one I lucked out with years ago because I happened to have the $500, or at least I thought I did. Uh, this was probably an irresponsible purchase at the time. Um, now that I'm uh, buying custom knives from people who, who make them, spending this money uh, on a folder does seem strange to me. But at the time I did, and I'm glad I did because I have it now, and it's you know, paid for and it's mine. <laughs> uh, but what I'm trying to say is if this is not something that's in your wheelhouse, but you're interested in the ergonomics of a hinderer knife, you can look towards Viper. They have some hinderer design knives, a couple uh, that are way, way, way more reasonable. You can also look at ZT. Uh, you can look at uh, um, Kershaw. Uh, Kershaw. Uh, you can look elsewhere to get the design and ergonomics of a Rick Hinderer knife. Um, but for me, this 24 with that long four inch, very pointy Warncliffe is one that I would want in my pocket if things got out of hand, uh, so much so that I was glad to have a defensive knife on me. All right. Oh, by the way, this one is pre, um, pre triway pivot and has an amazing flipper on the, um, uh, on those uh, Kevlar washers, not Kevlar. What are they? Nylon washers. So don't be such a spoiled brat and insist that you have. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all I'm trying to say is washers. Let's not forget about washers, people. All right. Second to last here uh, on the list is the Microtech Ultratech. Um, this one is uh, it's, it's such a great knife and such a great defensive option. Uh, but we're going to start with the blade in. One of the reasons I chose this is this is one of my favorite to hold. Um, and I've never held this in my hand uh, during a moment of fear or anything like that. But uh, when I have this in my pocket, this is one I, I hold. I'll pull out and use in my hand as if as if I were using this as like a, what is it called? Not a makiwara. What's it called? A kubaton right? One of those little sticks that you grip in your hand that you can uh, use in a hammer fist or, or other grips to, to uh, hurt someone, <laughs> whether it's <coughs> pain compliance or ballistic uh, sort of punching or something like that. I love the, uh, the attitude adjuster you can get from the not too pointy glass breaker here. You got a little tungsten ball at the peak of that little uh, tri- uh, triangular pyramid on um, something like the troodon you get a true point that that would you you would 
you would really like break skin and keep going with. This one you might break skin with if you had to hit someone with it, uh, but you could also just take it and push it into their skin and it wouldn't break it wouldn't break the skin, but you could still get that pain compliance. Anyway, I really like that feature. And you have the um, aluminum with the really, really nice sharp cut jimping. I love aluminum in jim. I love jimping in aluminum because uh, it really grips. And then you have, in this case, that beautiful double edged blade with the serrations. Just about as nasty as you can get in the Ultra Tech, if you ask me. I do love their Tonto. The Tonto is beautiful. I love the shape. And it looks extremely useful. Drop point has never appealed to me in the uh, none none of the uh, Microtech drop points really do it for me. Uh, but this and the Hellhound is cool, but a little a little too many notes for for what you get. To me, this is the ultimate Ultra Tech, double edged with serrations on one side. Uh, that has an obvious uh, utility benefit. Uh, if you're going to carry this around and do work with it, you have two sides, uh, two two different types of cutting, two different sides, a way to maintain an edge for a long time. Uh, but if you're going to carry it for defense, you have your option to hold it like this with the thumb backed up on the actuating switch, or you can turn it over. This even feels more natural to me and swipe at the bad guy with the serrations. All right. Last one on the list. Uh, uh, this is a hard. This was a hard one to choose. I had to get something from Cold Steel. I have a bunch, and uh, this is the one that right now appeals. But let me show you before I do two also rans. Okay, uh, the first obvious also ran is the is my serrated Voyager signature series uh, XL Voyager Cold Steel. Uh, the reason I didn't go for this ultimately is that this has a snaggle tooth MF on it. And uh, that helps you wave the wave the knife open. Uh, you pull it out of your pocket. This opens it up, snags on the edge of your pocket, opens up the blade for you automatically. I love that feature, but it is not a feature that comes standard on this knife. Uh, but otherwise, that Yadagon shape, that uh, center line point with the with the deep recurve and the serrations. This is just a wicked knife and a go to when I walk the dog. But uh, not that one. The second also ran here uh, by Cold Steel is the obvious uh, option, the Black Talon, uh, made for evisceration and and just total uh, mayhem and just it, look at its slashy nastiness. The reason I didn't choose this, I do love this knife a lot. And I love how purpose-driven it is, how unapologetically purpose-driven it is. But you don't get a thrust. You don't like if you're when I when I am playing around and I do a lot of thrusting and that point is good for pecking and this guy and slashing, obviously draw cutting, pull cutting, um, get off of me, get off of me, caveman kind of uh, vibe there. But there's no real thrusting with this knife. And, you know, thrusting can come from all these different angles, depending on how you're standing and what the situation is, and, it, and they can be deceptive and hard to see because they're coming at you instead of this way where you can see the arm. Uh, so that is the one deficiency with this knife for me. When I have it, I'm like, yeah, but I would instinctively go for a thrust. So if you're someone who trains, uh, uh, you know, and you go instinctively for a thrust, this might not be the way to go. But if you're someone who doesn't train, this is definitely the way to go because it will take advantage of your natu uh, natural slashing uh, and swiping uh, that will happen when you're in caveman mode. So, so it's a great knife overall, but for me, not the jam. But I wanted to mention it. All right, so the one that is is my new Talwar XL six inch in uh, in serrated uh, edge here. So, a couple of things about this knife. Um, let's start with the obvious, uh, the business end. Those serrations are just absolutely wicked. You have a really, uh, really swept up, uh, belly there, but you do have a portion of straight. It's almost like you have two portions of straight here and here separated by this wicked belly. You got the point up high and it might seem like it's too high, but then you look at how the edges and the how the edge and the point is presented 
from the arc shaped handle that it's attached to. Okay, so if you're up here in a Filipino grip, you have uh, full, you, you, the tip is up high and you have full use of that belly and, and uh, with that sort of forward motion and uh, reinforced with the thumb. As you move back, the angle changes. I love this knife back here. Now you have that sort of kukri uh, effect here uh, because look at where my hand is and then look at where that, uh, where the belly is. And then this ends up becoming a recurve. And then the point is now below center line. And uh, so this knife can, t and then right here in the middle, you kind of really do have the best of both worlds. You can, you can turn it like this and that tip is in the same point. You know, when it's like this, it's going to change positions. Um, so I love the versatility of this. That six inch uh, S35 VN blade, <clears throat> blade with those uh, five points and one scoop uh, serration pattern there. Let me see if I can get that to focus. I defy you uh, to find something uh, more wicked. Okay, yeah, yeah, the recurve is pretty sweet. I guess, I guess at this point we're dealing in minutia, uh, which which XL cold steel with serrations is wickeder than the other. But right now, this one is the one I'm I'm feeling the most. Uh, also, in that size, it's manageable. You go up to the seven and a half inch XL Espada, and now you're dealing with something that's a little bit larger. Uh, to deal with when the shiznit goes down. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Sorry, I put that word in your mind over and over and didn't say it myself. Uh, join us next week for another uh, list of of uh, essential knife goodness. Uh, also, join us for another um, interview and also join us on the 21st for the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway, where we give the two Civivi knife package out to one of you. Uh, lucky guys or gals out there for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at review the podcast.com for show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, the knife junkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at the knife junkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on the knife junkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at the knife junkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knife junkie.com or call our 24 seven listener line at 724-466-4487. And you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast. Mm -hmm.